What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage coming to you live on, what is it, July 2nd, which in my mind is basically halftime. While yesterday was officially halftime of 2020, guys, the, between now and next Monday, it is truly halftime uh, for 2020. And with me today, I have Mr. Jason Mitchell, uh, one of America's top real estate professionals. And, and, and Jason, you tell me, but based off of the post I saw you make where you did what, like 138 million in selling homes in June, this month? Yeah. In June? Yes. Is, is that the number one team in America? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, who does the monthly numbers. Uh, and I think we ended up when it was all said and done, I think we're at 142. Um, 142 million for the month of June for that's all of our marketplaces that we have. Uh, I would say that as for a real estate team, it probably puts us pretty close to being up there. So we've had, you know, record months for the past four months in a row, we keep expanding our marketplaces. And so by doing so, it allows us the opportunity to obviously do more business. And so, um, yeah, you know, we're off to, you know, real estate's been resilient throughout uh, COVID, as you know, probably better than anybody. Um, it's been very resilient and uh, people are out there uh, buying houses. So we're lucky and fortunate to be able to service a lot of them. So we had, we did, we had a great month of June, One, 142 million we did in June. Yeah, it's just mind boggling how much business that is and for one organization. So, so guys, Jason is not your typical agent. So if you think of teams, you think of an agent and a G, one geo with, you know, three, four, five, six people servicing one geographic market. It's got a unique model and a B2B model. Uh, why don't you describe your model real quick, and, and then I want to do this interview all around how can you build amazing partnerships. So while you're building amazing partnerships on a national level, yeah, I think whether you're a real estate agent or a mortgage professional, you could build better partnerships in a, in a local regional uh, way, and I think people can get a lot of takeaways from you on that. So sure. if you don't mind, just describe your model for everybody. Sure. So we fell into a niche years ago where we became the servicing real estate team. Um, uh, you know, we started with, we, you know, I'll just come out and say, we started with the nation's number one lender, Quicken Loans. And I started with them about a decade ago. And I really grew my business around the model of servicing their pre-qualified clients as the agent uh, in a certain marketplace. And it was just me to start with. And then as we continue to grow our business with them and uh, they continue to grow their business, um, we started to do more and more of it. And so it allowed me to bring on some buyer's agents. So we started with a couple buyer's agents. And this is back in probably 2012-ish, 11, 12. And then I, I just thought, you know, this is so unique. And if I can build great technology and systems and training around, um, you know, ingesting a referral, distributing a distributing a referral to one of our agents, have great follow-up processes, have a great transactional experience for the consumer, and really dial in best practices based around that partnership in itself, you know, how, how their tech worked and how they wanted us to treat their client and everything, everything customized around them. We started building these different journeys and paths and, it, you know, we continue to build, um, but now, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough, we service, uh, we're in 15 states um, in the US and we service national partnerships um, all across the board in all of our marketplaces um, and some of the biggest ones you have. So, you know, Quicken Loans is a massive client of ours, uh, Zillow Group um, as, a, as a growth partner, Veterans United, uh, Axos Bank, you know, Cardinal Financial, you name it. I mean, the list goes on and on. New American Funding is a really big partner of ours. So, you know, we, we're very fortunate that we've been able to prove that in our little boutique world, that because we keep it tight and we keep a handful of agents in each market, we can continuously provide great training and great processes around this B2B model and understanding that each partnership is different. These are the best practices around it. And by being able to refer out, you know, 12 to 15 to upwards of 20 high quality referrals a month to our agents, they're able to close more business than they ever have. But then we also ask that they do it the right way, they do it our way, and that they service the client to the greatest extent. And so it's been, a, it's been an interesting niche. And um, you know we continue to grow, and we continue to add new markets, and we continue to do better with our partnerships, upping our talent pools, and upping our, our stack ranking for talent. Um, 
and so yeah it's been awesome man it's been a it's been a great ride and i think we got a long way to go no no doubt i think for the the real estate teams and the mortgage teams to tell me if you agree that embrace technology leverage their crm leverage video leverage technology and also leverage media are smart with what they're doing online smart what they're doing digitally the glory days are ahead i mean there's just so much success to have in both mortgage and real estate you align with that oh 100 percent, 100 percent, and you know, I, I believe that everything is video related these days. You know, one of my very close friends, his name's Seth O'Byrne, who has, uh, who I believe you know, Dave. Um, well, that's how we, we met as a referral uh, through Craig Sewing and American Dream TV. That's how, yeah, we, uh, and Craig, that's how we got here. Exactly. And you know, Craig and Seth are super tight and, you know, Seth's the king when it comes to video and Craig's the king when it comes to, you know, all the production behind it. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the guys that have been behind when it comes to that. That's why we actually just announced that we're going to be doing a big partnerships with the American dream. And so me, Craig and Seth will be doing a lot of stuff for us on our end. I believe that, you know, real estate is changing because the consumer is getting more challenging to get to. And what I mean by that is companies like realtor.com and op city that own search and Zillow that own search and these massive companies that are owning search uh, rocket homes, they're taking the consumer from the top and then they're owning that consumer all the way to closing. And then if you find lenders that get consumers at prequal, your big lenders, they're taking them from prequal to closing. And what that means for the typical real estate agent is that the consumer is being the, that major organizations are getting to your consumer before you are, because they have the ability to do it. And when they have their pitch and they talk to them about processes and they talk about a seamless experience, they are then looking for the partners that they trust to service their client, which means that the typical real estate agent that meets a consumer at an open house or somewhere through a referral or friend or family, it's harder to get to because people are getting to them first. And we're seeing this change and this shift and it's been going on for several years, but now everyone's really catching on to the importance of agent connection when it comes to the lending side, because, and, and we mentioned, we talked about this three weeks ago, Dave, if, if you're a lender and you take a pre-qualification and you think that if you don't match them with a trusted agent partner of yours, a professional, and this is whether you're a local lender or a national lender, the minute that you don't do that, when that consumer finds their own agent, that new agent is going to say, I'm sure they're great, but you should talk to my guy. And you lose the deal. And I mean, statistically, you lose the deal 94% of the time because you didn't allow an opportunity to ask that consumer, do you have an agent? And if not, let me connect you with one. And if you do that, the trust and confidence behind referring it to somebody like myself to make sure that we do our part to protect that partnership, that's where the importance of the connection comes into play. And, and now it's becoming commonplace for these major lenders to create these relationships. But, but it is, it's tougher to get to the consumer now as a real estate professional. And it's, it's ever more important as a, as a lender to make sure that you have trusted real estate professionals within your network because it's things move too fast nowadays you know people are gone and so you got to make sure that you're the one connecting the dots yeah there's there's no doubt so i'm sure i can inter interview you for two days um and i know and i hope this is not the last time we do another interview uh so mortgage coach community if you have questions put them in comments if you're watching this live in our facebook group right now give us some comments looks like we've already got a couple John Hill uh, said, two of my favorite people in the world coming together. What's up, John? Oh. I, I didn't know that you knew uh, Detroit John Hill. So, That's my uh, guy, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's, a, he's such a good dude. He's a friend of mine, too. I just uh, got into town. I got to hit John up. I just, I just got back to Michigan yesterday, so uh, I'll be hitting Hill up for sure. <laughs> All right, so John, you just heard it. He'll be hitting you up, hitting you up soon. Uh, Kit said, great point. Big players grabbing them from the top of the funnel. Uh, Daniel Riggs, great information. So cool guys, if you have questions, put them down below. And if you're listening to the recording, give us questions. I'm gonna bring them back and we'll talk more. So I'm gonna ask Scott Nicholson to come in in about 10 minutes because I wanna get your opinion on some of the creative strategies and the way that we're teaching loan officers how to be more than just a transactional loan officer. They sure. need to be strategists, mortgage strategies. Like we need to bring solutions to help families build wealth with real estate. So. He's going to come in in about 10, 15 minutes. 
But in the, in the meantime, I want to know how have you built these amazing relationships that are, that are driving this system? Like, what is your, what is your sales process like to get these relationships? I think that's what my job's become, you know, and even for uh, John, that's, you know, uh, listening on here, you know, I travel and I, and I get inter introduced and I meet new people and, you know, it, it was extremely hard when you only had one player on your resume, but that player happened to be a massive player. So that helped, but I didn't, I didn't have as many partnerships and I didn't have as many people. Look, if you work with our group, I have certain obligations that I have to fulfill. And the most important one is loyalty and trust. You know, like for us, we have to constantly be there for our partnerships. We have to know, and they have to know that we're constantly looking at our agents' performance metrics. We're constantly training them on best sales practices and approach. We're constantly upping our technology stack to make sure that it's more efficient, that we're utilizing the best tools to get in front of their clients. Because if we can trans transact, we know our, our partners will be transacting along with us. That's the goal. In fact, last year, if you sent a referral to us and you were a lender, we had an 84% chance that if that closed, it closed with you. So we do our part to make sure that we're, we're taking care of our partnerships. Time, time out, guys. I want you to make sure you heard that. He knows the percentage. If you gave me a referral, X percent closed with you. And we always talk about, if you want to be the lender of choice for a realtor, you need to be a conversion partner. So you need to be able to make the case that you refer someone to me. Not only are they more likely to close with you, and here's some stats to prove it, but it's going to go faster. You're going to accelerate the sales process. And I just love the fact that you had that matrix to make the point, or you had that sure. metric I mean, to make the point. Look, that comes part of, of, of being able to sit with partners that I meet with that, that don't necessarily know us um, and show them everything we got. Like, these are our tools. These are our metrics. This is how we measure our partners. This is how we measure our agents. And these are the accountabilities that we put behind them. And so, you know, if a file was closable, so if it closed, 84% of the time it closed, it closed with the partners that sent it to us. We want to do our part to be a great partner. And then from there, it's honestly communication. You know, I talk to my partners pretty much every day. And people say, well, it's impossible to talk to, you know, that many people. You know, we have probably we'd consider eight to 10 power partners. And then we have about another 10 to 12 partners that aren't necessarily what we, we consider tier one, tier two. And tier, tier one just has just more touch points to it, more technology behind it. Tier two just has a little bit less manpower behind it. So we separate that through uh, different different forms. But our big power partners, I talk to them pretty much every day. And the reason I do is because we have so many markets with them now that my job is to make sure that everything that you need, whatever you need, that I'm engaged and I'm involved. They need to know that that I'm I'm steering the boat. And I have a team behind me assisting with that. But it's ever more important to me that we have the communication with our partners. And they also hopefully understand and know that if they need something on our end, if they need to bounce an idea off you, if there's a new strategy they're coming out with, get, get Jason on the phone, see what he thinks, right? And so it's important to me to not only be a partner that gives back and, and, and receives opportunity, but I have to be somebody in it with my partners too, so I can strategize with them and poke holes in things and, and say, no, I don't think that would work because of this, or I think that's a great idea because of this. And we just work our way through. And so it's really important as being a partner is being somebody that gives back their time to the partnership as well too. So and that, that's really a, a big part of my job. Love it. Love it. So we could go deeper on that. And I want to go deeper on that. I, I also want to get a little bit more about the media play and what you're going to be doing with Seth and Craig and American Dream. If you don't mind just giving a high level on that, because I think it will be a good setup to when we bring Scott in and we talk about a mortgage strategy. I want to hear, you know, what, as much as you're willing to share around yeah, what so you're doing with those guys. Craig is building out the shows right now, what we're, what we're looking to do. We, we want to take this on a national level and have a show based around the philosophy of B2B relationships. And so the idea and concept will be that I'll be visiting a lot of our great partners, um, interviewing them, talking about um, what they have going on uh, in their side of things, what they think the future is what 2020 challenges have been and really bringing to light our partnerships as well as introducing myself in some of these different marketplaces that we're in and going through these markets and, and, and expressing again, like the challenges of this market versus that market. You know, we have, 
I would say, I, I believe there's about 26 total markets that we're in um, between all the states. You know, California has like five, six markets. We're in Texas has like four or five. Um, Florida has three or four. And so we're roughly about 26 total markets. Um, but I'm looking forward to the whole American dream philosophy. I've known the guys a long time. And we want to be able to, look, the more that we can add quality agents to, to our team, because the one thing we don't do is we're not a recruiting firm. I don't go into a marketplace and say, I want to interview 30 people and hire 28 of them. We very rarely hire. And so when we do bring on agents, it's because there's a need. And the need is we have too much deal flow and we need to add more agents to that, to that specific area to service our clients, right? And so we need to make sure though that we're bringing on the right agents. And so to be able to leverage media content based around our value prop to the agents that work in our, in our agency. You know, our average agent last year increased their business 400% in 12 months. And wow. so it, it's real. And, um, but with that comes, you know, our way too. You know, we're going to help you grow your book of business, but, but at the same time, you got to make sure you're doing things our way because we know our way works. And so hopefully using media to get the message out to more agents and more marketplaces to help us grow and expand our markets. That's probably one of the main goals that I'm looking to accomplish with it too. So we'll see. Love it. Love it. Well, it's great validation community. We talk a lot about you need to become that digital mayor of whatever your strategy is. If you are a specific city, I live in Lake Oswego and I want to be the most well-known lender in Lake Oswego and within a half hour of Portland, you've got to use media. You know, we have Annie Ranson in this market with American Dream. So uh, here's validation from one of America's top realtors who's not just doing it to build his brand with consumers, he's doing it to build his brand with other realtors uh, and, and, and from a recruiting standpoint. So I, I just push everybody, you need to have a media strategy and you need to be intentional about it. If you don't have one, it's just a massive missed opportunity. And it seems like you clearly align on that. For sure, for sure. Hey, Scott, I don't know if you have, I don't see you on camera yet. Are you, can you hear us yet? Scott Nicholson? Oh, there he is. Looks like we got Scott Nicholson from, from uh, San Francisco. What's up, dude? Yeah, Golden Gate. I'm in lockdown mode right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, there Jason, go. how so, are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure. Um, man, I tell you what, I was trying to listen just a little bit coming in, man. You were saying niches and you know, starting just from scratch, you know, by yourself and getting these big accounts and differentiating yourself in the marketplace. And I I I, I was, had a couple questions is you know, ask a couple questions that I think you guys wanted some stuff too, but um, what are you seeing from your side of the fence, you know, dealing with your day-to-day -day transactions with the consumer in the middle of a pandemic? For, you know, I will tell you that um, it's a great question. It, it's been interesting because we, we're not, you know, our firm, because we deal with so many different lenders um, and also different networks in itself too, um, search networks and, you know, you have like the Zillows and the op cities, the realtor.coms and, and whatnot. Um, what we're finding is that, you know, our, we're not this luxury boutique firm where things move slowly, things move very quickly. And in the conventional markets, with the exception of New York, um, Michigan for a while, uh, Jersey for a while, um, states that we could operate new business in, it, it was bizarre. It was as if the pandemic allowed people that kept getting pushed around in the marketplace to say, hey, maybe I can actually go buy a home now because right. I don't have five or six cash offers against me because the majority of our business is all conventional. Yep. And so, and it's transactional. And so we just, we just saw that from the amount of referrals that we were getting in to the amount of people that were actually missing out on properties because all of a sudden it was like people just got out there, you know, rates hit all time lows and, and, you know, it's crazy how busy it is right now. And so right. we're just yeah. turning and turning and turning. And we're, we're coaching our agents right now that you need to be telling your clients that it's not a, it's not an eight to eight out of 10 checklist right now. It's six out of 10. The key is the rate. Like you just have to buy a home right now. Right. In, in six months, that house is going to be worth, you know, seven to 8% more because of what's going on, because 
rates aren't going to go up anytime soon. Rates are where they're at for a while here. And, and there's just a flood of conventional people in the marketplace right now. Mm -hmm. Again, with the exception though of, you know, New York, we, we just, I think yesterday was the first day that you could show houses in New York. I believe, I believe it was yesterday. Um, and so the states that still were very, very strict, of course, like we're doing virtual tours and things like that, but states that we could operate in, it's been crazy. I mean, it's been absolutely mm -hmm. crazy. So right. yeah, it's, it's as good as you get, so to speak right now, which is really nice. And what's interesting, like in California, you know, <clears throat> it's funny, I was, we were presenting to a group last week and one of the things that, you know, legally you can't hand out a paper flyer, right? In the state of California. So Everyone's looking to transition into digital. How do I get my business more, you know, a foundationally built online? How do I, you know, how do I create that transaction from a virtual showing to, you know, to get my lender involved and to get, you know, everyone like, okay, done, here's the virtual tour. Okay, let's get her contract. Let's get her moving. And I think that's the, and this is a big group, you know, we were presenting to, and they were just literally like, I don't know how to get there. And that was, so that was very interesting to hear. Um, and I know you guys want to hear some things and I'll show you guys some things from a lender's perspective, how we're dealing with consumers in the middle of a pandemic, right? Not everyone's immune, right? I may have kept my job, but I got a haircut, you know, five to 10%. So when I was pre-called by lender X12 or whatever, one, two, three in February, now coming in July 1st, that's a different pre-qual you know, sure. or a different type of, you know, I can't buy that listing anymore with you. So that was some of the things that I could show you guys what we deal with. So, so, so Scott, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Go, no, you go ahead, Jack. Go no, ahead, so, so one of the things that uh, I'm finding in the jumbo markets is that a lot of consumers are shocked that have gotten prequal two, three, four months ago that they're now having to pony up another 10, 15, 20% because there's just no investor behind the Jumbo product right now. Are you noticing that in the Jumbo space that some of those consumers are, have totally backed off because of down payment requirement? Yeah, and so, you know, that's a great question. It's exactly what's happened, especially in that space is that Jumbo market, because there's no backstop there, right? You don't have, you know, backed by Fannie Freddie or any agency or anyone backstopping that. Jumbo's, you're on your own. And so that's why it's a tight box. It's the best box, right? As far as credit qualifying, but the amount of assets needed, not only because the 90 LTV is gone, 85, it's really minimum skin is 20, plus you have to have a reserve requirement. So it's requiring a lot of cash in that space. And that's funny because that's one of the things I'll, I'll show you guys how to deal with like move up buyer. Right, because most of your consumers are sitting there like you did maybe their low or their transaction in 12. Hey, we got this equity position, but how do we get to that next rung? And when I'm sitting in my lender, they need 500,000 of liquid assets and we just, we have four and we just can't get there. And that's some of, I'll show you guys that. But here's what's interesting in the jumbo is here's a stat and you're a stat guy that I'm learning right now. 18% forbearance in jumbo market right now, leading the country, not even close. FHA is 10. Think of that. FHA forbearance, they're filing 10% clip. Jumbo's filing an 18% clip. That's that consumer, right? So think of that niche. They're going, that jumbo space is tight already, pre, now it's even tighter. So now you got to think of creative ways to free up cash flow. How do I get that consumer into that type price property for 20 or let's say they think they have to put in 40. How do I get it for 30 and earmark the 10 for the reserves? That's the puzzle you have to figure out. Sure. Sure. So, yeah. so Scott, let's try to do this in like three, no more than five minutes. Cause I want to ask a few more questions for yeah. Jason. I want, I, there are some questions from the community and I also want to get him back out there supporting his team and doing biz dev. Uh, so share, because I also want him to get a look at a mortgage coach TCA because we, he, he loves the concept. It's a digital presentation. Right. It's showing options. Show, give us a strategy and tell us how it can help an agent sell more homes. And then we'll, we'll talk sure. about it. Sure. That's dope. Ha, ha, have you not seen one, Jason? A TCA? Yeah, he, he's, he's seen okay. it, but, okay. but I, but you're, you're one of the country's top mortgage strategists. And he hasn't seen it around solving a problem uh, in today's market. Okay. So here, here's exactly what we just talked about, right? Here's buying with debt. So um, 
I do a print, uh, I do a presentation to my, my agents called selling in a pandemic. And one of the things I tell my agents is there's two things that consumers going to bring in. They're probably going to bring in less money, right? Cause they took a haircut to stay at their current employment or they brought in more debt. So if you look at these three rows, February 1st, we'll call it pre-pandemic. They were pre-approved to buy your property at a half million for 26 and some change and 60 cash to close, right? With 275 and a monthly debt, I have to decrease that pre-qual, right? That's basically, I'll slide, I'll slide over to the fourth column. In order to do that, I have to drop price by $53,000 to get that 275 savings. What we teach is called a seller buy down. So if it was your listing, I would help you structure uh, the buyer's agent or if you, it was your open house. I go, no, we're going to write an offer to Jason at 500. I'll structure a 19,000 seller buy down. It's probably cheaper. Uh, I built this a little a month ago. So we did a single premium buy on. I dropped the rate two and five eight single premium. I got the payment down to save 275, but look at my price point. I moved them up 53,000. So as an agent, right, Jason, would you and your seller invest 19? It's probably cheaper, a little cheaper, more like 15 today to save gross 53 or net 38. Absolutely. You're bringing 38 back to your seller's net sheet. Think about that. And this is your only buyer say, we're plugging them into your listing at full, full appraised value at 500, give them the payment they need because they need to save the 275 for the debt just to qualify for that. Does that make sense from a financial standpoint? Yes. So we teach that in this environment. So this would be, this would be selling in a pandemic with agents, right? We're teaching consumers how to say, here's our list. Here's your low ball offer. Here's our counter. We're going to counter you at 500 with a 10,000 seller buy down. And we're going to deliver the same financial benefits to you. Think about that. We're, we're, what, a, what about for a buyer? Because you do a lot of buyer's agent stuff. So what about the situations where a buyer agent would use this? I mean, this makes tons of sense for the listing agent. Yeah. What about the yeah. buyer's agent? So all you would do is recalculate and reframe this, right? So we're going to go, hey, buyer, if you want the 500K and your lenders now moved you down to 460 on your pre-approval, let's reapprove you and let's build this back up to where it was pre-COVID, we'll call it. Let's go ahead and write an offer to Jason. I'm working with a buyer's agent or if I, we're going to double end it with a listing agent. Let's write it for five, buyer. Let's get them under contract. Let's negotiate the 10. We'll structure in the contract. And I'm going to give you the payment as if you're paying it for 40000 less. How I mean, far can those tiers go down where rates are as low as they are right now? How, how many is a tier and a structure and a buy down? It depends on the coupon. Think of it as, you know, it's like a jumbo. We can get into the low twos. Right. Fanny, that coupon gets into the low twos also right? That rate. Not only that, someone who's coming into a smaller price property, what you attack is PMI, right? So you're structuring the seller buy down to work through the PMI. So you greatly increase, increase affordability. So yeah. what, you're, what you're teaching the consumer here, it's not price. Don't attack Jason and his price. We need to sit down with Jason and negotiate the best financial terms that's going to help you financially each month, right? And qualify for these loans in a pandemic. And really, here's what it, ultimately what I say to it. Jason, would you invest as a seller and listing agent 10,000 in order to net and save 30,000 for your seller? Absolutely. Right? Because think of the presentation I just gave you. Either you take the low ball offer at 40 or you take a full price offer and give them structure 10. You know, and that's the presentation. Not only that, we do this in a move up. So this is me partnering with my real estate agents. Now we're going into, let's say here's your jumbo market right now. So we're going to go in instead of like you were just saying, 555,000 to move up, we're doing it for 390. That 160 that we're saving there from assets needed, there's your reserve requirements. So there's Scott, let me ask you a question though, because the challenge becomes not the person that knows, the person that doesn't know. And there's always two sides to a transaction. Yeah. And it's really challenging from time to time to where 
you can be the soundboard for your client, whether they're the seller or the buyer, but there's another two parties, meaning the other agent and the other party itself that has to understand what you're saying. And a lot of times they don't even want to hear it. What, how do you educate your uh, agents to be able to have an intellectual conversation with the other side so they at least listen to the discussion? I could, let's say this was your property, right? And so you go, Scott, go ahead. I want you to work your magic. You got a budget to work with, create some financing. And I want to pitch this to as many buyer, buyer agents as possible. So we could literally deliver this into a virtual open house. We can deliver it on a yard sign. They text into the number. We deliver this presentation. And when they click on financing options, I'm going to deliver them a full mortgage coach delivered by me right? Go over the exact details on this one. particular property that you and I are trying to sell for our seller. With a video on it. So, so that's, a, the, the, the answer, like that. that's cool. Yeah. I like the video section. That's great. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the power of mortgage coach. Cause there's always more than one stakeholder. You know, even when you're dealing with one borrower, there's a husband, there's a wife, there's a father-in-law that's loading on down payment. There's a buddy at work. That's a real estate expert. And so part of the mortgage coach magic is it's this dynamic link that you could put a video on and you can even update the video. So if, if like, let's say the, the, the buyer's agent was like, I want to pitch this, yeah. this is the strategy, but I really need help getting the seller to hear it and listen with the mortgage coach, you can update the numbers. So it's consumable. You can update the video and now you've got it as a, kind of a sales tool and a communication. Well, I like the fact it's not intrusive because what becomes threatening is when you have three, four people on one call that are trying to all explain everything, you yeah. get to watch this at your leisure and be comfortable yeah. and just listen. Yeah. And that yeah. there's very, there's a lot of power to that. Yeah. And, and here's what's incredible is like on this particular property, the, the agent was going to drop a hundred thousand. And so we worked in a 50,000 for half price. 50,000 seller buy down into this transaction. Do you much, do you realize the buying power he went or what, how much he would have to drop in order to equate a 50,000 seller buy? He had to reduce price $260,000 to have the same financial payment as a seller buy down. So think about that. You, we could go after buyers that are pre-approved at a million. What would that be? A million seven, million five, high million five. I mean, that's incredible. And it's a very it. smart approach. It's a very unique, smart approach. I really like it. And then now take it to the masses. Now you deliver. Here's your going to your database. This is your move up presentation. You deliver into your past clients. You're, you, now you're creating inventory. Now you're going into your database going, guys, Scott and I want to present. You know, here's a Zoom. We're going to do a move up analysis for everyone. We're going to teach you how to move up, you know, make it more affordable or we'll do it with less money needed. And then now we're pulling out inventory. You know, they're there. We're dealing with the roadblocks, affordability and capital, and we move right through it. And that's so. Like, go ahead. So Scott, let's do this. Stop sharing the screen because I want to ask Jason a question as it pertains to this. And then I have one more question before we let him go. So, so one, Jason, do you, you, you get the strategy. Do you Definitely. see how a loan, a, a mortgage coach like Scott, could go to a realtor and say, hey, let's create some move ups in your database. There's some people that through COVID, they want to, they don't know if they want to move up. They don't want to move down. They don't know if they want to stay here. Let's do a Zoom slash Facebook live event and provide an education to get them to go, wow, there's a better, I mean, there's a lot of people that could sell their home, get enough money back that they put more money in the bank. So they're more secure. They put less money down than they thought. Right. to get the home they want. Do you think that that's a great idea? I do because I think the strategy is being ahead of it too, right? Like if you're offering as an incentive to purchase the property and saying, hey, look, instead of us negotiating 150, 200 grand, if I throw out there that you're willing to do a three point buy down on the property automatically, which would take an average interest rate to two, you know, at part 2% or whatever it is, yeah. save yeah. thousands. Of, like it's a, it's just a strategy that I haven't seen yet in the market that when you think about you know, from a numbers perspective, it makes all the sense in the world, both on a buy side and on the, on the list side opportunity as well. It's very smart. I mean, it's just, it's just being, it's having somebody like you though, Scott, that smart that says, no, 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 let's do it this way. Let's try it this way. And here's the other side of it too, that really helps. 
even if somebody chooses to do it or not do it, if you're in a competitive situation as an agent and you can speak intelligently about concepts, yeah. to me as a consumer, I would say, I'm going to hire you because you're smart. Whether or not I chose to go that direction, I know that you're smart. I know that you can think out of the box. And I think there's a lot of power to that too. And you know what's funny? The piggy on that. So imagine you, you basically make a one-page edit to your listing presentation. Why Jason? Why me? So I'm going to go in there. Here's what I can help you do. And that, not only this, I'm going to give you a plan B. So if we don't get a full price offer within 20 days, here's how I'm going to pivot. I'm going to pivot. My lender and I, Scott, we're going to market the seller buy down for a third of the cost versus a full rate, you know, price reduction. And I, I want you, I, I encourage you to interview other agents, but I want you to ask them this. Tell them when things aren't going right, what is their plan B? Their strategy. Right? Yep. Yeah. And so they like, and, and you know, you've kind of left the stick of dynamite there. You lift the fuse because when they ask them like, oh yeah, price sales, we got to go. Price it, reduce it. Like, wow, you're just fleecing the inventory or my equity out from me. Where Jason and Scott, for a, a third of the cost, gave them the same financial benefits, but yet they kept 20 grand. Let's say it was 30K, right? A 10,000 seller buyout. They kept 20,000 on my net sheet. That's a great way to get the listing. Right. There's the difference here you're just talking about. I love it. Yeah. And you don't, do you do many listings or mainly buy side transactions? No, we do. I, you know, we're definitely more buy side heavy. Um, you know, we probably have a couple hundred listings right now, but we're, we're more buy side heavy for sure. Um, we probably, yeah. I mean, I would say if there was a percentage I could pull that I could pull it in our BI, but it's probably, it's probably 80, 20. Yeah. That's what I thought. So let me, so Scott, Thank you, bro. Feel free to stay on the call. I want to wrap this up in the next five minutes. Um, I had a question come in. So, I mean, you've got a really unique model. And while people, I'm sure they got takeaways, they got inspiration, they got clarity from this. What, what advice do you do give the typical local referral-based realtor and mortgage person um, to really optimize your strategy? Because they're not going to go out and get a national relationship with a big player. It's hard. Like for, it takes yeah. some, it's hard. It's hard. There's no doubt. I will tell you this. On a local level, it's the same philosophy. It's just at your own velocity, right? Because even if you got a national account, could you really manage that with your current, with your current uh, structure, right? And a lot of people would say, no, I, I couldn't. If somebody, you know, we had... 1800 referrals last month, you know, like most people can't handle that. They don't have the capacity to do so. But that's why building locally and locally to get to that point is so important because you have to build your efficiencies, right? Like you have to start building your machine. And I think it's a great approach on a local level to start building relationships with, you know, your typical guy, you know, your divorce attorneys, your CPAs, your, you know, uh, local businesses as an HR play, right? Um, and I say this, and Dave, I'll be on stage and I'm talking about like the value, of a, the value of a partner versus the value of one consumer. It's exponential, right? If, if they can deliver. The first thing I always say is always try to deliver for them first. And that's my approach to this day is what can I do for you? How can I help you? What can I do to support your business? And when you go there without, not with your handout, but actually with their handout saying, I just want to help you. I want to support you. This is my thought. It's important to have that plan because a lot of times people will take meetings and they just want to go meet with somebody and think because they're likable all of a sudden that they can capture their referral business. And it doesn't work like that because if I'm sitting down with somebody, I want to see the plan. Look, when you send me a client, this is the program I'm going to offer them. This is the incentive I'm going to offer them. This is the lender I'm going to associate with them, which are also going to offer a variety of discounts and savings, right? Like this is the entire streamline approach that we're going to take every time I receive a client from you. And this is the process and experience they're going to receive. And so I say this when I'm on stage and I know that people will go set appointments, but they don't bring a plan. And if you don't have a plan of attack of to what you're going to do, then it's really all for nothing because all you're really doing is just being a glorified coffee partner because you really don't have a plan. So the most important thing is if you want to get into this space, you have to build a plan around your workflow, but what you're going to do for that partner. This is what I'm going to do for you. And this is what I'm going to do for your consumer. 
and they're going to have an unbelievable experience and so are you. But if you're not willing to take the time to build that out, like, like that presentation Scott just showed, I know, you know how many hours that stuff takes? And to even like, you know, take mortgage coach as you guys continue to build new product around it. You know, you, you task and project this out. These are months and months and months of work to, to place a product in the market. And that's what people aren't willing to do is the busy hard work to build the plan. They want to show up with a one page sheet that says, hi, I'm so-and-so and I would love to be your partner. Well, that doesn't really cut it. So it's, it's truly the hard, busy work to build something that you can take to the market. No, no doubt about it. And guys, I was hearing him talk and it reminded me of my last interview with Ryan Grant. And he is a lender, large lender, works for Fairway, and is, he was able to become the preferred lender for Facebook. And I interviewed him, like, one, how did you get that meeting? And two, how did you get them to become the preferred lender? And he had a plan. And, and so, guys, one, I'm going to put a link to that interview down below. He walks through his art of home ownership platform. And his plan was pretty simple. When you really listen to it, it was like, I am doing more than just pre-qualifying people and getting a loan. I'm truly helping them make better advice. And when he said that, he was able to show a mortgage coach TCA. So he didn't call a mortgage coach TCA. He said, I am providing a personal analysis to help make people make better decisions. So he became part of his proprietary platform. He also uses HomeBot. So he's like, hey, every single one of your employees and clients, I'm going to put them into this platform and I'm going to help them uh, manage their biggest asset. Their, their home. And, and so he took, it is, listen to you, he took other pieces of technology, he created his proprietary platform, and then he, basically he convinced them that yes, I can close a loan, and so can a lot of other people, including their previous preferred lender, but I can provide value beyond the transaction. You know, and that's and one, funny you said that because we do the same thing. So we, we don't use, home, we did use HomeBot, we use a different organization now. But what we do is anytime a client closes, they now receive essentially their JMG black card. And that card is their savings for life. So once you close a transaction with JMG, you're entitled to benefits and savings. So discounts on listing, discounts when you buy, discounts on some of our preferred vendors. And every month we send them their market analysis report that goes over everything. But when they look at the report, it's also continuously highlighting all the different incentives from our concierge service. If, you, if you're out of town and you need something picked up, you can use our concierge service. If you, you know, need a pool guy, if you need a whatever. So bringing value post-transaction. But, but Is it house happy? Are you using house happy by any chance? No, but I know those guys are nice guys. Yeah, no, it's, uh, uh, no the concierge uh, is not house happy. But I did talk to them and I, I like their product. Um, but the point is what you just said. Post-transaction, we're going to bring you value so you know what's going on with your most important asset. But in addition to that, we're also going to make you part of this club. And this club is going to be your lifetime rewards of real estate. And additionally, what our lender partners like is if they were a client of a lending partner, when they go on there and they pull the report, that lender partner is highlighted on all the analytics that we show. So they love the fact that there's continuous branding around that and a call to action to that too. And so I agree with your point about like, it's not about, and that's, everyone's so transactional. It's like one transaction, I got to find my next deal. People don't realize the value of a portfolio. You know, the value of your portfolio is just so critical. And that's why to us, we always wanted to be the team or the group that focuses on your typical buyer. You know, your three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollar buyer that we can service a ton of them because it was all about being able to service people in our portfolio post close. So it works. Love it. Love it, guys. Well, I want to be respectful of your time, Jason. We're going to wrap this up. Mortgage Coach Community, if you didn't get a chance to ask a question live, we will have Jason back. Put your questions down below. I can't wait to see what you're doing with the American Dream, guys. Uh, everybody who listens to this, you know, I'm a huge fan of Craig Sewing and American Dream. If you want to be a partner or you want to elevate your content, like if you check out that interview I did with Trevor Moad a few months ago, or not, maybe a month ago, Craig and his team helped me shoot a better video. And I think it's got over 40,000 views now. So not only did they help me create a better piece of content, they elevated it. They also improved the distribution. So check that out and um, either connect with me and I'll refer you to Craig, dave at mortgagecoach.com or just reach out to Craig. So 
Jason, any closing thoughts you have for the community or how can people follow you? How, how would you like to engage? Oh, sure. Yeah. Just uh, Instagram's great. It's Jason Mitchell Real Estate. That's my Instagram handle. You know, obviously follow me on Facebook. You know, we're starting to do more and more. Um, I have, um, I have our, my book coming out, my course. It's my 40 day mastery course. That'll be coming out in about 45, 60 days. Um, all the audio is done. We're just putting some finishing touches. That'll be pretty cool. And Dave, I'll have you be one of the first people to check that out when it's ready. Um, I would love to. I'd love I to help you launch that. Part of this group very much and scott thank you i appreciate you coming on yeah thanks for having scott, me on. thanks thanks for coming in like that brother and bring in some mortgage coach ninja moves that was uh, good stuff, scott that was really high level yeah yeah i appreciate that all right all so, right uh, all right guys we'll do a follow-up but happy fourth to both of you yeah happy hey, and, hey anybody watching this happy fourth if you got value give us a like if you loved it love it watch this with your team have a good one and jason you're the man Appreciate Thanks, you, brother. Guys. Appreciate you. Thank you, boys.